Yeah, Sean, just to, just to finish up the, the original question, what's the last thing, last piece of visceral fat that seems to hang on? And then there's something called brown, adip brown adipose tissue, which I think has a different, and that's usually located, you know, in the, in the upper thorax, you know, how do you distinguish that from the quote unquote bad visceral fat? And have you seen any changes in that when you, when you do this scanning? Yeah. So, you know, residual um, persistent vis uh, visceral fat uh, typically is in the deep part of the abdomen. It may be the last parts we see are around the viscera, um, small intestines, a little bit, you know, hanging around there, but uh, those large gelatinous uh, community of, uh, of visceral fat pretty quickly uh, in less than a year, we can just get rid of that. And, uh, and people's bodies change, their shapes change. As far as brown adipose tissue, BAT, which is a super exciting, you know, biological marker that, that's positive. So you, you want more BAT. Uh, that is more histological than it is uh, uh, available to be imaged by uh, MRI scanners. We, we utilize a low resolution scanner uh, in our particular facility, we have a low res, uh, low resolution scanner. You might be able to see that in a, a much higher Tesla rated uh, MRI scanner, uh, but it's it's just not uh, it's not a very large amount of tissue. But I'd love to be able to see if we could image it. And my uh, I'm excited about that. My comments about that is you're born with it and you have it as a child, and then as disease comes into your body it's eliminated through the same process disease accumulates, we use that bat. But I think we're going to see bat uh, start accumulating back in, uh, in humans. Uh, I have, uh, I live in Minneapolis, it's, it's cold. I mean, much of the winter is below zero. And I walk around routinely wearing sandals and shorts. I have amazing resilience. I don't know how much bat I have, but I have really great cold tolerance that I'm going to attribute to, to bat. And, you know, I do some things, you know, to help out, I take cold showers and cold immersion things along those lines. But uh, yeah, I think bat is a super exciting topic that we should be taking a look at. And uh, it's sad that we, we lose it as child, but it doesn't have to be. I think, uh, you know, uh, I tell people, if you want to, if you want to know what healthy looks like and you're an adult, look at your kids they have the absence of disease. And so it's the accumulation of disease in children that you see uh, develop into adults in the form of you know, manifestations of chronic disease. But as you eliminate chronic disease, the adults start looking more like their children. And so the absence of chronic disease gives them a more youthful appearance, a healthier appearance. And I think uh, that's, that's an exciting target. So I use that to try to educate people about this process. Uh, it's, it's really a, a matter of education, I think, to, to help people understand the influence that chronic disease plays uh, very insidiously in their life. They just, it's a slow period of time it accumulates. And as you eradicate it, 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 it comes off actually faster than it goes on if people are motivated. Sean, how, what is the correlation between subcutaneous fat and, and visceral fat? I mean, it, are we likely to see people like guys walking around with a six pack that have a bunch of visceral fat? Is that pretty unusual or is that? Yeah. I, you know, uh, I was surprised that, you know, the two, uh, twins that, uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll put some images uh, of them up there. They, they have six packs, but they, you know, they have some measurable visceral fat in there. Now, not a lot, but, uh, absolutely. I have, MRI scans of people with six packs, walk around showing it off, filled with visceral fat. They eat a high, car high carbohydrate diet. Uh, they're taking exogenous testosterone. They're living a life of, uh, of uh, trying to look good on the outside uh, and not really optimizing their health. So great question, absolutely. So you really don't know, you know how, how healthy somebody is without taking a look at that, um, you know, that visceral fat in there. But the other way to take a look at is their faces. They're, they're, those six pack people, um, you know, they'll still have inflammatory faces. And I think that's the vegan community, 
you got a lot of vegans, even older vegans with six packs filled with visceral fat in there. And uh, I've successfully scanned vegans, one, one vegan, 27 years vegan. And he, he looked at me and goes, I said, we'll measure your visceral fat inside. He says, oh no, you're not going to find any visceral fat in me. I have been vegan for 27 years. And he had close to 10 pounds of visceral fat, thin guy that accumulated, walked out, turned high fat, low carb, started eating meat. So, um, and his visceral fat went away. So uh, I'd love to scan more vegans. Uh, I'm not soliciting like 20 year olds that just went vegan. I want those 60, 50, 60 year old vegans that have been vegan for 10, 20 years to come in. And I want to show them what that 10, 20 years of uh, a high carbohydrate vegan lifestyle, uh, unfortunately has done. And vegans, they're good people. I mean, they're, they're people. These aren't, you know, the enemy, um, but they're just misinformed. I, I was misinformed. I was an ER physician. I, I was terrified of fat. But as we, you know, learn more about science and learn the proper diet that homo sapiens should be eating, I think we're going to see the eradication of chronic disease and as long as people look to the science and not to the politics, there's hope that we're going to eliminate the biggest problem in our country, which is chronic disease. And I say that because no other problem costs us more money. No other problem injures more people, ruins more lives, and kills more people than chronic disease. And the sad thing is, it's completely preventable. And there are so many players in this system contributing to it. The government, healthcare systems, the insurance companies, the food producers, marketers, they all have some contributory blame to this incredible, serious, largest problem in our country. And we, we gotta dissect this, we gotta break this down. And I'd like to challenge Amazon if they're listening or Apple you figure out the application of biomarkers to reverse chronic disease. You inform people the appropriate lifestyles for homo sapiens. You are going to disrupt healthcare, the largest part of our economy, $3.8 trillion. And it's just available for somebody to do it. And I would encourage you to try not to chase money. Uh, your, your marker should be just the improvement and the gift to humanity. It would, befall homo sapiens if we could just get rid of chronic disease. Yeah, it seems like maybe the biggest barrier...